Okay, what is today? Uh, what is it, July the 8th, I think? Yeah, today is July the 8th, which means exactly one week from today, from one week from this Saturday, the Lionel Operator Train Society will be here. And um, this video is dedicated to kind of the preparation and the work I put into this layout beforehand, kind of the how we've done things at this point. I'm going to post some clips of stuff that happened the day of, and then I'm going to do a recap afterwards on my thoughts and how it went and uh, things I do different this time. But anyways, coming up to it right now, quite literally six months ago in January of 2023, everything over here did not exist. We didn't have an upper level. We didn't have any of these supports. We didn't have an incline. We didn't have an incline on over here on the left side. We had quite literally none of all of this. We just had track, no, we didn't even have the track fully laid out. I was still piecing it together. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sam with Sam's Trains. This is the night of January 12th of 2023. This is the final piece we have to put in for the main outer loops to be done. And there we have it. Track has been laid, finally. And in six months, we have been able to put all the track together, we put the inclines on, we put the upper level on, and we've finally gotten all the wiring. As you can see, some of it's still under there. We've gotten all that done in six months, and it's honestly been quite the, uh, quite the challenge, but you know, it was gonna get done eventually. But the way this came to be is kind of a story, and let's go ahead and get into that real quick. About six months ago, I joined a model railroading club called the Crossville Model Railroad Club. It's over in Crossville, Tennessee, about a half an hour, 45 minutes from where my layout is. And they had an HO club, an O scale club, and everything. But of course, I was interested in the O scale stuff since that's what my layout is. However, about quite literally two months after I joined, the mall management was deciding to do something different with the mall, so we got kicked out because we didn't fit into their plan. And we had nowhere to go. And I had just learned at that time that the Lionel Operators Train Society was supposed to come to the club to tour the club, but because the Crossville Club was now going to be gone when the Lionel Operators Train Society was going to be here, they obviously couldn't tour that anymore. So I did some deep internet research and I found the phone number for the person who owns lots and who does all the coordination for that. I gave her a call and after some talking and after she came and looked at what we had so far in the layout, she said that she would love to have a group of folks come over here instead of going to Crossville so that they could see my layout. The only thing was, that was about three months ago, but three months ago we had almost no upper level, if anything and we barely had any wiring. I don't think we had anything wiring done. So I was basically told, hey, in three months, have your whole layout wired at least to run two trains around your loops. And I knew I was putting myself up to this challenge, but it definitely was a challenge. We got done with wiring this layout about two weeks before they were supposed to be here, and it was quite a stressful thing, I will say. I know that most people, when they do open houses, they don't have to get their layout running, you know, two weeks before the convention, but I do understand there's been a lot of preparation, and like I said, even besides layout stuff, there has been a lot that's been going on behind the scenes. Over here in the shop, you guys don't get to see this area very much, but we've had to clean almost all of this. I had all of my Lionel boxes kind of over here when I'd unbox a train, and all those had to go. And it didn't stop there. We mopped the floors, we swept the floors, and we had to clean up all this area, especially so that we could put the Crossville Mono Railroad Club's traveling in scale layout over here. I saw this when I was at the club, and I thought it'd be a great idea for them to bring it here so that we would still have some part of the Crossville's club at the open house to show and signify that they're still around and they're still, you know, a club. They just don't have a physical location yet. Some things that are definitely behind the scenes you guys probably would have never known. This is an active shop. This table saw, this saw over here, even the saw underneath that cover right there, they're all active. I could turn this table saw on within about two minutes if I wanted to. So we've had to basically completely disable all of the woodworking things in here for the safety of everyone around us. There are some things like this sander that can just be unplugged, and there are some things like the saw over here that comes out that really can't be unplugged but can be disabled. 
This thing right here is what turns it on. We're gonna put a piece of wood over here and tape it down pretty darn well so that no one can easily turn that on. We definitely don't want anyone accidentally hurting themselves. So long story short, there's been a lot of preparation to making this work, especially besides layout things. Now there are still some boxes out here and there are still things to go because we are still a week away and I'm gonna be coming back again. These are actually all my friends. He was here working on the layout with me, running some trains. And we've had to take out these uh, 054, 72 switches because they are, I don't want to say they're garbage, but some of the steam engines don't really run on them very well. And one of the steam engines that I have, the Nickel Play Road 765, was one of the engines I was going to run on the day of, and these gave that engine so many problems. So, to simplify things, we took them out. Now, I don't even think they're coming back because they give me problems, and I don't want problems on this layout. I want things to run smoothly even when I don't have an open house. I want to be able to sit down and run trains whenever I want and not have to worry about them hopping the switch or causing a derailment or shorting out my transformer. So, whatever it is, these things have been problems, and I think they're going to go for good. I think. That will be probably in the next update video. I'm figuring this out still as we speak. Now, besides all the preparation and just getting the layout done, I've had to pick out consists. I think what I'm gonna run is a coal train and a passenger train. The passenger train is gonna be the Nickel Play Road 765, along with 10 or 9 or 10 Lionel 21 inch passenger cars. Those things are absolutely beautiful, and the 765 by itself is an immaculate piece. That train will be one of the highlights of this open house. The coal train will be powered by these three Lionel engines. I did have that last one as a mid-train DPU. However, that was causing me problems, and like I said, the name of the game this time is reliability. Making the trains run for two or three hours without problems instead of just making it look good. So, there are gonna be three up front, and none in the rear, and none in the middle. Now, I don't know if this is gonna be exactly the three I run. However, I've been running these three for about four to five hours today, and even though I've had problems that I've had to fix, the engines have never been the problem. So I'm pretty sure those three are gonna be what ends up pulling the train, but we'll see. And one of the final things I did is I started a little bit of scenery on this end of the layout. I will recap this in the next update, but I decided that this area was a little bit bland, and I could go ahead and start covering it up with some scenery and some ballast. I think this looks pretty good, but like I said, I'll do a deep dive into this next layout update. For now, this is your little sneak peek into what you're gonna see in the next update. So that basically covers the preparation for lots being here. So right now, I'm cleaning everything else off the layout that doesn't belong, including vacuuming it, and getting all the little bits and pieces, all the screws, all the track pins, the drill. There's one guy out there who keeps seeing that drill in every video. There might be an easter egg coming soon where that drill makes it in every single video. I don't know, but I might try that. Anyways, everything that doesn't belong on the layout besides the trains, the track, and anything else like that will be gone. So, especially over here where I have all these supplies down here where I was working on the scenery, all the soldering iron stuff, bottles of water, anything that doesn't belong, anything that's loose will be removed. Okay, so I'm back here again. It's currently the 13th, and there's a little bit more I've done. First off, I did a little bit more scenery work. Right here, I have officially ballasted the rest of these two tracks. If you remember a few videos back, I had the outside and the inside track here ballasted, but I put some more ballast in the middle. I also put some shrubbery here. I'm gonna do a little bit more with that in the future, but I just did this for now, and I think it looks pretty good. There's a few spots, maybe like right here, maybe a couple more that I need to touch up with actual ballast, and then like I said, I need to add some shrubs and some more overgrowth and stuff to make it look better, but that will all be coming in the very near future, hopefully. I also did some work over here. I did a little bit more touch up. I added a little bit more layers over here. I don't know if I'm gonna extend this further or not, We'll see. Also, I've got a couple of cool things in this box that I'll be coming in a future video, but that will be to find out later. Anyways, this is my friend Jess. He's been, I don't think he's been in a video yet. His trains have been in the video though. If y'all watched my last update video, which you should. And um, yeah, he's been here today. He has been a big help with putting things together and just enjoying the trains. He lives locally, and so we just come over here and run trains together a lot. Um, very, very poorly, I realized that this train is turned around. These 21 inch passenger cars, because of the um, kinematic couplers, yes. um, they love to bog down and sort, of, and sort of like run up on each other. So this train's gonna have to be turned around, but I don't wanna run two trains in the same direction. So guess what? This massive coal train behind me is all gonna have to be turned around. 36 cars and three engines. Yeah. But anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and dust off the 765 and then dust off these engines and uh, 
Yeah, I'll turn them around. Okay guys, and here we are, and I've got everything set up. I have QR codes here for people to check out the channel and other things with. Um, I've got everything cleared off the layout. I have a couple of pads over there, I'm just gonna leave those. Uh, the stool is out of the way too, I used to have a stool right here to get up to the layout. Everything over here has also been cleaned off. You can see it all looks very nice and clean now. Um, I did plug this up too. The Morton Salt Tower is now plugged in, so that will be operational during the day of. Um, I did a little bit more work over here, a little bit more stuff gluing, and I think I told you guys about finishing up this. I added a little more touch-up stuff today, but I also switched the trains around, so now the Nickel Plate Road is going that way, and the coal train is going that way. My grandfather just got a harmonica. Once again, I have to thank him for everything that I'm doing here because without him, it would not be possible, that's for sure. I think this is all good for tonight. Um, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow, the day off. Here we go. Okay, so I have a few folks here from the Crossville Model Railroad Club. This is my good friend Jess. He's gonna be manning the in-scale layout this afternoon, and I just got a text that they should be here very soon, uh, according to the exact text, so, uh, yeah, this is exciting. It's, it's surreal. This is happening. <laughs> this is happening. Hey, I'm Scott. Hey, Sam. Hey, Sam. Nice to meet you, Sam. Any instructions for us? Uh, or just want to see I've got a speech for you. A speech? You want to talk? Yeah. Okay, I can afford this. Microphone. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm gonna get a microphone, please. Just a second. There you go. Hello, hello. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Hey everyone, my name is Sam Wilson. Thank you all for coming today. Uh, a few months ago, the plan was for you guys to visit the Crossville Model Railroad Museum, but sadly we've had to relocate. Um, I joined the club myself in January, and I enjoyed the two months that I had there, and I'm excited for us to rebuild once we can find a new location. Today we have a member here with the traveling in-scale layout, um, so definitely make sure you stop by and visit that, and tell them hello. Um, speaking of other people, my grandfather is going to be here. Uh, he graciously let me use this workshop um, uh, for my layout. He's a carpenter. And uh, he was also a brakeman on the New York Central Railroad for 27 years. So he will be telling railroad stories and maybe playing the harmonica if you're interested. Definitely make sure you go talk to him. Anyways, welcome to the Southern and Appalachian Railroad. This is a modern style land that is loosely based on the road marks along the Norfolk and Southern C&O and TV line that runs right here in Rockwood, Tennessee. I have been building this layout for seven years and in the past few months I have just gotten all the electrical work done. It's not very scenic, but I have some cool things planned. If you have any questions or suggestions for my layout construction, please go talk to me. I'm always interested in learning new ways of doing things. If you want to stay updated on my layout progress, I have a YouTube channel named Sam's Train. I post updates on layout progress, run trains, the product reviews, and I do tutorials on how I do my scenery and how I fix my trains. Feel free to follow me if you're interested in seeing how the progress continues. There'll be a QR code you can scan to find all my social media all around the layout. You can also take a photo of it if you can't access YouTube here. At some point during your trip, we'll also be getting some group photos around the layout, so 
make sure you don't miss that. Now, without further ado, let's go run some trains. Yeah! Everybody all at one time? Yep. Okay. Here we go. This is so cool. <laughs> I 
not really public necessarily, but still open house, was a pretty good success. There were a couple issues, and I'm sure if I 
quick debrief on what happened. Mainly the SD90 kind of crapped out. I went to go run it and it started flashing the light at me showing that the motor stalled and the engines were quite literally dragging that one along. So I couldn't use that one anymore. Had to take it off. But that was really the only major issue. I had a one car, 121 inch passenger car jump the track. Had to reset things there. But that was the only other issue that we had. Everything else went very smoothly. Met a lot of great folk. Had a great time. Hopefully they get back safe. Made a lot more connection. I hope that some of you guys that came here are going to end up watching this video, so now you'll know a little bit more on what went into it. Um, but I'm very happy that today happened, that this was a lot of fun, and, um, and hopefully we'll be doing this again soon. Anyways, I think that'll conclude this recap, this sort of behind the scenes on the lost visitation. But I am Sam, and I'll see you guys in the next video. There we go. Huh. Oh, Get him, kill him. There's a piece of wood right behind you. Kill it. Oh, that boy's big. Oh, I'm going to kill it for you. Yes. <laughs> what? Whoop her. Oh. Got him. He was crunching. He was crunching.